Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at our Savior's this morning. Uh, Happy Father's Day to those of you who are here celebrating or celebrating later today or celebrating fathers who aren't with us anymore. We uh, give thanks for the fathers in our lives. We will have them included in our prayers today and a wonderful day to be together. Well, I am Pastor Kiri. I get to introduce Abby Paulson, who is our worship assistant this morning. And if you are new to Our Saviors, we would love to connect with you. We do have a connection card that's in the pew pockets right in front of you or on the website if you're worshiping online. That is under connect. Just a couple things to highlight. Next Sunday, June 25th, is our uh, next social justice forum, and this one is Scams Targeting Seniors. We do have someone coming from Minnesota Senior Linkage. Uh, There will be one forum at 930 in room 122. So if you've got a friend or someone you know comes to the later service, make sure they come for that forum at 930. I bet you or you know someone who has been targeted for a scam. And so it's important that we know what to watch for, we know what's out there, and um, can be aware. So I think this will be an important forum next week, and uh, we're glad to welcome Minnesota Senior Linkage. Coming up, are our uh, we're going to have a presence in the community at two summer festivals, and we are looking for people to be part of those and to sit at the booth and be just welcoming people in the community. You can see in your happenings how to sign up or you can catch Lisa Rick and Kastler. And then I do have a uh, announcement of a service coming this week. I think we even have a picture. Maggie Lotfala passed away and her service will be this Tuesday at 11 a.m. here at Our Saviors. Uh, also to announce we've had the death of someone who uh, has been a longtime member of our Savior's most recently living in Florida. Ed Drops passed away just yesterday. Um, I can hear a lot of you know him. Um, and funeral arrangements for that are pending. Uh, his daughter, Diane Strandlin, is working on those arrangements with her brothers. So those are all of the announcements. I invite you to stand as you are able and we'll share God's peace with one another with a smile or a wave.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. opportunities to grow in our love for you. Guide us and lead us wherever you want, so that we may grow closer to you and so others' lives are changed. Strengthen us in our trials, that we may follow you even in our hardest days. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the scripture. And we have a bit of a text snafu today, so the scripture isn't going to be on the screen. We'll just get to listen. Our first reading is from Philippians, the first chapter. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, 
your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading as we continue our series, Profiles in Courage, and focusing on those, some characters from the Old Testament who showed courage in the face of trials. It's from Daniel, and you'll see who it is in this story. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet after he... Segway, they didn't burn up. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is so dramatic that we get to this point I'm like oh I'm kind of a letdown <laughs> uh, well I have created my own Father's Day sermon tradition here at our Savior's I think this is the third year in a row I'm going to start the sermon with a joke so here is this year's selection a priest a minister and a rabbit walk into a bar the bartender says to the rabbit what do you have and the rabbit says I don't know, I'm just here because of autocorrect. <laughs> that one came out during a barrage of dad jokes that were being shared around the bonfire just a couple of nights ago. So happy Father's Day to those often courageous people in our lives and our community, the dads. Well, we are in the second week of this series called Profiles in Courage, and we're looking at some Old Testament figures and their particular form of courage that made them faithful to God. 
But to start, I'm going to read some quotes that speak to courage, and I want to see if anyone can guess who said them, okay? Um, here's the first one. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Has anyone heard that? Helen Keller. Courage is, next one, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is more important than fear. That one is Franklin D. Roosevelt. All right, here's another one. Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Winston Churchill. All right. I know someone out there knows this one. Are you ready? And it's kind of, there's kind of a big hint in it. Courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. John Wayne. <laughs> Just a couple more. Creativity takes courage. That one is Henry Matisse. And finally, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. That one is Steve Jobs. Well, today as we explore this series, Profiles in Courage, we are going to look at another quote. Something that group of guys that recorded in the Old Testament story from today. During this series, we are digging into these Old Testament stories to examine the lives of men and women who came face to face against incredible challenges and yet somehow were able to find the courage to move forward. What can we learn from their stories and how might their words help us to be courageous too? So today's story, which was read earlier, is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or in the Veggie Tales version, Rack, Shack, and Benny. Have any of you seen Veggie Tales? It's much easier to say Rack, Shack, and Benny. So kind of long story short, King Nebuchadnezzar was asserting his power, and Rack, Shack, and Benny stood up to him. They wouldn't bow down to his statue of a golden calf, his golden idol, because they knew their scripture. They knew their first commandment. They knew the words, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods. So the king found out everyone in the land bowed down as he had ordered, except Rack, Shack, and Benny. So he called them in and gave them an ultimatum. When the music plays, either you bow down or you will get thrown into the fiery furnace. Talk about a high state games of musical chairs or something. Well, this was no easy decision for them, but ultimately, here is the quote they said. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Whoa. In the face of the furnace, these men look at the king and say, the God we serve is able to save us, but even if he does it, doesn't, we won't bow down. That takes some guts, right? That takes some courage. And the music played, and they stood still. King Nebuchadnezzar, I think like a parent who gives an ultimatum, knows he needs to follow through or his authority will be undermined. And so he orders the three guys to be thrown into the furnace. And what he expects to happen doesn't. He gets a report that not only are they not burnt up, they are no longer tied up, but rather walking around in there. And there are four men, not three. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Now, this is an ancient story, but it's about a very modern problem. See, all of us, one way or another, sooner or later, if we are at all serious about our relationship with God, if we are at all committed to being followers of Jesus, we will face times when we are pressured to bow down to idols. 
Now, probably not 90-foot-tall golden statues. I mean other kinds of idols. Maybe at work you're being asked to do certain things or work certain kinds of hours that keep you from living God by God's priorities for your life. The idol is promotion or success. And if you don't bow, maybe the furnace is getting passed over or even getting fired. Our students have to deal with idols they're told to bow down to every day. Acceptance, popularity, reputation. And if you don't bow, maybe the fire is being excluded or ridiculed. Or maybe the idol is being stuck, wanting things to stay the same despite a changing world, pressing you to change and meet people where they are. Sooner or later, every one of us feels the pressure to bow down to idols. We feel the pressure to do this or go there, or to buy this or to achieve that. There are all sorts of idols all around us, idols that can lead us away from our devotion to God. The story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tells us that many times when we don't bow, we can find ourselves in the furnace. But here's the first lesson we can learn from their story. Lesson number one, God will meet us in the furnace. If you were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, wouldn't you have wanted God to show up before you were tied up and thrown in? You know they wanted to be delivered from the fire, but God decided to deliver them in the fire instead. Sometimes God does deliver us from the fire. Sometimes God intervenes so that we don't have to go through it, but oftentimes God delivers us in it. I don't know what kind of pressure you're facing, what kind of fire is coming your way if you stand your ground and do what God wants you to do. But whatever the furnace may be, God is able to deliver you from it. But if not, God will meet you in it. So keep faith. There's a second lesson we learn from this story. After Nebuchadnezzar sees that the true God is with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he praises their God, and their God becomes his God. So lesson number two, God will reach others through the furnace. Many times we have no idea how what we go through impacts the people around us. Whatever fire you're going through or might go through, whatever tough thing God is asking you to do, part of God's grace may be that others are reached through it. I see this happening all the time. People who go through relational struggles or struggles with addictions or struggles in their careers, time and again will see God use their furnaces to touch the lives of other people. God will not only meet you in the fire, but God will reach others through it. So have faith. And lesson number three is this. God will bless you through the furnace. After coming out of the furnace, look what happens. Then, from Daniel it says, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. He gives them new positions, new opportunities to serve, new places to influence, new ways to contribute. Something will happen on the other side. We can't usually picture what, but often there is growth and newness of life, things we couldn't previously see come to pass. This past Wednesday, we celebrated Founders Day at the first of our summer chapel worship services. I think about 151 years ago, what did our founders imagine when they started this church? What did they need in their lives? What furnaces had they come through to get here? And could they have pictured the furnaces that lie ahead, not just in their lives, but in the world, and in how this church would continue to serve through all these decades? So like lesson number one, I imagine they knew that God would meet them, and God would meet us in our hardest days. That was their faith. 
Lesson number two, I don't know that they could picture who the others God would reach might be. Did they have any idea that 150 years later this church would still be here? That there would be baptisms and marriages and funerals? That people would share the love of God by the ways they show up to support each other? The way they care for each other? And finally, lesson number three, did they wonder how they might be blessed through the furnace? What blessings did they themselves receive by going through what they did? By coming to a new wild place and starting a church? Today we give thanks for the courage and the faithfulness of the generations. We celebrate that they took risks that they, against a lot of odds, built this church, and by church, I mean a church community, a community of people. From their courage, God's love has been made known all the way through to us in this time and this place. So today I ask those of us gathered here, what courage shall we ask for from God? What risk might God lead us to? so that we can grow closer to God and that others' lives are changed. We, we are now the founders of what God is about to do in this time and this place. Thanks be to God. Amen. as you are able and join me in the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us pray for a world in need. God, give this community the courage to follow where you are leading. Guide us and lead us so that we may grow closer to you and so others' lives are changed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Father's Day, we pray for fathers we love and for fathers we struggle to love, for adoptive fathers, stepfathers, and foster fathers, for those who long to be fathers, for men in our lives who have loved and supported us, for men who have nurtured us in faith. Give courage, wisdom, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, Holy God, you hear the cries of those who are mar marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth holiday, guide us to continually work towards the end of oppression in all of its forms. Bring true freedom and flourishing to all your beloved children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of growth and wonder, we give thanks for the ministry and new things experienced by those who were part of our Savior's youth mi mission trip this past week. May the fire ignited in their work and the relationships continue to burn their everyday lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer and are need and pray, need and healing, we pray. Paul Wyatt, Liz Clifton, Bruce Allen, Helen Jerning, Bob Porches, Jess, Marge Lindquist, Sue Casey, Tyson Carr, Jim Zyke, Michelle Brown, Brittany Danielson, Audrey Lundstrom, Randy Hill Jr., Lynn Gleason, Michelle Leslie, David Kappelhoff, Jovita Romero, Cherry, and Pat Nelson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all of those who mourn and walk with them as they learn to live with the loss of their loved ones. We remember especially Ginger and Eric Johnson on the death of Ginger's mother, Edith. Diane and Kurt Strandlund on the death of Diane's father, Ed Drops and the family of Maggie Latav Latvala, and the family of Rick Mike, as they grieve the loss of their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, for the sake of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Well, today as we consider our offering, it really is a day of giving thanks for those who have paced past faith along to us, our founders, our fathers, and we give thanks that we are the ones who now are put in a place where we can pass on faith. And so that is what our offerings do. We come together so that we continue to be a church community witnessing to the love and grace of Jesus Christ. So there are various ways you can give. If you are here in person, you can place your offering in the baskets by the doors as you leave. You can also always mail in a check you can use the Vanco Giving app, or you can give through our website, oursaviorslc.org. Let us pray as we give thanks to God for all these gifts. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Give us glad and generous hearts that your love would bring about the healing of the world through us. Gratefully we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels 
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. he was betrayed our lord jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me we join together as we pray the lord's prayer our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, first, a uh, few things about communion. All are welcome to receive communion here at Our Saviors and receive the gifts that Jesus gives us. Uh, you have choices. You can come forward or you can commune where you're sitting using a communion kit from the ushers. When the servers are ready at the front of your section, they'll give you a nod. You can come forward row by row. Center sections, you'll come down the center aisle and go back on the side aisles. Outside section, you'll come along the wall and back on that same side aisle. When you reach your communion station, simply hold out your hands. It will drop a wafer into your hands. You can step to the next server and dip your wafer into the chalice. The large part, which is red, is wine. The smaller part, which is white, is grape juice. You can, uh, after you've dipped your wafer, you may eat it and return to your seat. If you need gluten-free, those are available at all stations. Details are on the front of your happenings. So for those communing in place or at home, Hear these words as you receive the meal, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite the communion servers forward.
Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Generous God, thank you for feeding us at your holy table. Send us now, strengthened by this meal, to speak out with courage, break down divisions, build bridges of understanding, and serve others in your name. Amen. And receive the blessing. The God who created the cosmos, the God who is with you always, bless and sustain you, giving you courage and peace. Amen. Peace, be strong and courageous. We will. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.